Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I'm Safir. In this session, I'm going to talk about Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, so we will first discuss about Millennium Development Goals and then I'll talk about what is sustainable developments, what are the components, how to measure it, and then what are the practical problems. And then we will also talk about the Sustainable Development Goals. And you know why it is important is because our planning is also now in alliance with the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, so we will start with the Millennium development goals guys this is very important they can ask you questions in mains and they can ask you essay even though the time is over the target period and everything is over but still they will ask you questions from millennium development goals both in prelims as well as in mains which among the following are the millennium development goals can be asked in prelims and it, it, its implementation its uh, results and everything can be asked in the mains as well connected with sustainable development goals so in case if they're asking sustainable development goal also still you need to talk about millennium development goal because it is actually a continuation most of the goals in sustain millennium developments will be continued over there also okay so the target period of millennium development goal was like 2015 and 15 to next 2030 till then it is sustainable de sustainable development goals all right guys so it was adopted in 2000 millennium development goal by united nations organization and there are certain global goals as well as country specific goals is also there and it has to be to be achieved by 2015 and what we need to see is what were the goals what we achieved and what we did not achieve and what are the changes have been made in sustainable development goals and then there were eight main goals and 18 targets are there so what we do is we'll look into this eight goals okay so the first one that's the most important one poverty elevation poverty and hunger elevation right both has to be reduced by half so guys you can see in the millennium development goal the goal is to be reduced by half maternal mortality or poverty etc and when you see sustainable development it has to be eliminated completely so by 2015 it has to be reduced by half and by 2030 you can see it will be completely eliminated that is actually the goal so poverty or hunger now guys if you see uh, poverty is actually you know measured based on calorie intake before right now it is based on you know the some rupee like uh, rangarajan calculation is there suresh tendulkar calculation is there but it was before based on calorie intake if you see our criteria that means if you are poor means you are not able to get adequate calorie to eat that means your hunger so poverty is actually measuring the hunger only okay so when we talk about poverty it is actually the hunger so poverty and hunger elevation and initially the poverty line was like dollar one now it has increased to 1.25 by world bank so and we achieved this goal poverty we have reduced to half hunger we marginally missed so poverty and hunger alleviation so you can just write poverty we have uh, achieved half and hunger we have marginally missed so you should be knowing what we have achieved what we did not then primary education universal primary education universal primary education and we have almost achieved it so what i am discussing here is the goals and what we did our achievement is what i am discussing so poverty we have achieved the goal hunger we marginally missed primary education we have almost achieved okay third one child mortality so decrease or reduce the child mortality by 2 by 3rd between 1990 to 2015 so we significantly missed this so we we didn't achieve this significantly missed this the goal was to reduce to 41 okay but uh, it was 48 so we significantly missed this so our child mortality is 48. Now the fourth one, decrease maternal mortality by three by fourth between this period. So child mortality two by third, this is by three by fourth. 
And this also we significantly missed. So very important to remember that child mortality goal we significantly missed. We couldn't achieve it. Maternal mortality also. So what was the target here? It was 41, but we were at 48. That means we missed it. It has to be reduced, right? And what is the target in maternal mortality? It was uh, 108 was the target and uh, ours is 140. So this also you can see we significantly missed. Okay, how many mothers will die upon delivery out of 1 lakh? 140. That's a bad figure. And the fifth is reduce the gender gaps. Reduce gender gaps. Okay, and uh, we partially achieved this or half or almost achieved this. So a gender gap in education at primary level we have achieved, but the other levels we have missed it. So that is why I'm saying partially. So gender gap in the education in primary level we have achieved but others we have actually missed it okay next one check spread of hiv malaria etc okay so we have achieved hiv okay but uh, malaria we did not achieve so guys if you see poverty we achieved hunger we marginally missed child mortality we missed Universal education, we achieved. Maternal mortality, we missed. HIV, we achieved. Malaria, we missed. Gender gaps, partially achieved. And then environmental sustainability. So here, uh, two, three things will come here. Access to safe drinking water. Safe drinking water, this we achieved. And access to sanitation, this we significantly missed. Okay, and uh, you know, especially in rural areas because of various factors, cultural factors, and so many other factors are also a reason for this. And then forest cover, forest cover, we uh, partially achieved, not completely, partially achieved. Okay, so safe drinking water we achieved, sanitation was significantly missed. So what is that significant miss? Sanitation, child mortality, maternal mortality. Okay, so forest cover partially achieved. And next one is easy one to develop global partnership for development. Global partnership for development. Whether we achieve this or not is not a question because we are trying for different, uh, you know, global partnership. And obviously, we will say this we achieved, right? So, what all things you need to remember? Is there anything related with poverty? That is the first one: poverty and hunger. Poverty we achieved, hunger we marginally missed, and then you uh, primary enrollment, right? Education we achieved and then child mortality two by third that we significantly missed maternal mortality three by four we significantly missed and then gender gaps partially achieved at the primary level we achieved but not not at the other levels and then hiv malaria hiv we achieved and malaria we missed it environmental sustainability with respect to that safe drinking water done sanitation no forest cover partially global partnership easy to remember and absolutely there is no problem okay now let's talk about the sustainable development goals so when we discuss the sustainable development goals actually adopted upon the completion of this that means in 2015 and to be achieved by 2030 so what is the uh, title title is transforming our world transforming our world the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. What is actually the definition which you can give for sustainable development? You know, you can use anything, but without threatening or without compromising the needs of the future, right? So you don't want to compromise your needs, but your greed should not compromise the needs of the future. Okay, so uh, this is sustainable development. So originally introduced in 1972 in conference on human development, there are 17 goals here. We cannot discuss all the goals. And then there are 169 targets. I can mainly talk about the areas here. It is very difficult to discuss all these 169 targets. Okay. And some new dimensions have included here, like institutions. Okay and then governance related aspect and growth you cannot see that in the previous case here go that is why if you see our planning 
is now in alignment with sustainable development goals okay so employment etc sustainable cities and habitation peace and justice so you will see different uh, you know other dimensions as incorporated okay so here qualitative aspect is considered more important before quantitative right we are talking about 2 by 3rd reduction 3 by 4th reduction like that so here quality is what matters instead of quantity so because if you see even uh, in case of education we are talking about enrollment of child but that does not do anything right you will just see the enrollment but that student is going to school or not is he continuing or not is not actually counted or understood whether you enrolled or not yes enroll means achieve the goal after that what is happening with the student is he is he getting drop out is he going and is there any promotion so that he can go to school are you giving mid day meals and everything is not actually checked over there are you enrolled if so the target is met but here that's not the case here quality not just numbers not quantity just like what is the difference between growth and development growth is related to quantity development well being quality so development indicators are like poverty unemployment inequality etc growth indicator is national income the production part that is quantitative this is qualitative same way millennium development goal the targets and everything is quantitative so here it is qualitative okay so now earlier in the previous case almost half right like 2 by 3 3 by 4 uh, uh, hunger to be half etc but now here in this it is stressed upon elimination okay so hunger it was half but it has to be zero poverty has to be zero okay so here uh, focus is also including the local bodies you have to bring in the local bodies ngos private sector participation right and the corporate social responsibility and all those things is there not much external funds to be used in this unlike the millennium development goal that means you should not depend much on the external assistance you create employment you create growth right so the, it is a, also a kind of inclusive growth everybody should participate in the growth and everybody should get benefit out of it at the same time environment also need to be protected the future generations need also should not be compromised and all these things are coming in and elimination of all these uh, you know poverty hunger uh, maternal mortality child mortality enrollment to the children and everything is part of it already so now our overall planning is mainly focused on this as you know already there is no five year plan rather we have a national development agenda right so in the national development agenda which is for seven years and this is actually a part of vision documents which is uh, for the next 15 year so there is a vision document for next 15 year and there are certain targets which has to be achieved and what are the targets the same as that of sustainable development goal so we aligned our planning our policies to the uh, you know sustainable development goal and the vision document which is adopted by niti ayog vision document for 2030 which is adopted by niti ayog is clearly reflecting the sustainable development goal or it is in alignment with sustainable development goal since i have discussed about sustainable development goal let me also talk about sustainable development sustainable development see guys it refers to that process of development that could be sustained in future in simple terms so a development which could be sustained in future a development which could not compromise the needs of the future so un world commission on environment and development uh in 1987 there is a famous definition one common future right so it defined uh, sustainable development as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their needs so it also need to meet the, see it doesn't mean that you have to stop production or you have to compromise on your needs no you have to meet your needs but without compromising the needs of the future the point is simple your greed should not affect the need of the future nature of everything to satisfy your need but not your greed according to mahatma gandhi right so it it actually uh, calling for intergenerational equity between generation equity so that is what sustainable development it is taking into consideration the needs of the future and it is also related with the carrying capacity what is carrying capacity capacity of environment to absorb the impact of human activities 
So what are the features? Guys, when I talk about sustainable development, see, growth is the first part. Growth is required. And then comes development. Growth means quantitative. Development, which is qualitative. When I talk about sustainable development, I need growth. I need development. I need quantitative aspect. I need qualitative. I need numbers. I need the well-being. But it has to take care of the future generation needs. Okay. So that means conservation of environment. So if I see first, let me mark it. Economic growth. Okay. And then when I talk about development or so first one, that is economic growth or uh, increase in national income or real GDP, right, etc. So this is, let's say, first, first aspect, first goal. Second goal is like we need to promote development, right? And if you see the third one, we need to conserve the environment. So it's not only conserving environment, it also demand for growth. So when I talk about sustainable development, it include all the three, one plus, two plus, three. So what is growth? If I use growth, growth means it is only one. This component will come. When I talk about economic development, what will come? This one and two will come. But when I talk about sustainable development, all the three will come. That means national income should be there. That means GDP increase should be there. Development, that means the well-being should be there. And it also conserve the environment. Okay. So I hope this is very clear how to measure or what are the indicators. Guys, it is slightly difficult to measure, right? But I'll just tell you first one, green GDP. So uh, sometimes GNP also, both are same here. So green GNP or GDP, it's okay. So it is a GDP adjusted for the cost of environment. Okay. So environmental degradation. So there are some criteria you need to use and uh, different countries may use different criteria. But the problem is there is a problem in calculation, right? Because different, there is no fixed criteria for measurement of environmental degradation. Guys, see, uh, if I talk about gross versus net, what is the main difference? Main difference is depreciation of machinery, something which is used for production. So we know net is going to give you the perfect figure. Let's say I have a company and I've bought some machine, let's say 100 crore and the production is, let's say 100 crore. I've made a production of 100 crore. So if I calculate GDP, what will be added? 100 crore. But in that production, I had a depreciation of my machineries and everything that is, let's say 20 crore. So what is effectively the production? Is it 100 crore? No, I have to, I have to add the depreciation, right? minus 20 crores. So effectively it is 80 crore and this is net. So net means that is net uh, domestic product, NDP. Net means gross minus depreciation. That will give you the perfect figure. But why we use GDP always? Why we use gross always? Because it is difficult to calculate depreciation. Something which are seen to you very clearly machines you are paying. And if you cannot measure depreciation, how can you measure the cost of environmental degradation? That is the biggest problem here in the calculation. So green GDP, this is a theoretical concept. Practically, it can never be applied. What is green GDP as its name indicate? GDP, which is adjusted with the cost of environment. What is NDP? GDP adjusted with depreciation. Well, that itself you are not using because there is no fixed measurement. There is no fixed way to calculate depreciation. Different people, you see different, different levels of depreciation. So forget about environmental degradation. It is impossible. So it's just a theoretical concept. Practically, it is not possible. Next one uh, is genuine savings. Genuine savings. So guys, genuine savings means uh, savings for the future. So uh, it's like uh, there will be gross savings, okay? And then depreciation in man-made capital. What is, what is that? That means the machinery, okay? Minus depreciation in natural capital. What is this natural capital? It is an environment only, okay, nature. So that is what genuine savings. So this is one of the other measure of 
or indicator of sustainable development. Genuine saving means savings for the future. What is the actual saving? So total saving, but at the same time, you have to depreciate man-made. Uh, avoid, that is what net. So gross minus, if you do this, you'll get net saving, right? Net saving. And net saving minus, if you adjust it with environment, you will get the genuine, what is the effective saving? That means the saving for, what is the effective saving for the future is what you get. But again, what is the problem? The problem is calculation of this is very difficult. Even calculation of this itself is difficult. Depreciation in man-made capital itself is difficult. There is no fixed criteria in measuring that. That is difficult. This one even more difficult. So that is actually the problem, right? So it's a very vague concept and uh, is difficult to measure. So guys, I hope this is understood and that's it. That's about this session. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, we can comment below. And guys, consider subscribing the channel also. See you in the next session. Thank you so much guys for watching.